Hey everybody, it's Noon here, back with part two of this video about industrializing in Victoria 3. So in the first one, we sort of looked at tools, um, and uh, the first couple of techs here, lathe, mechanical tools, and we just unlocked atmospheric engine, which is kind of the start of the second industrial revolution with motor industries. And so this is going to let us build um, railways and water tube boilers, which uh, unlocks a bunch of... Um, more advanced production methods. So uh, railways is going to be the next tech that we take, I think, um, because we really need infrastructure in our landlocked states. Um, if you're playing somewhere like, I don't know, say two Sicilies where you can build ports, you might take uh, railways at a lower priority, but um, we really need railways. So we're also going to continue improving our tool manufactories and ensuring our construction sector can keep growing. Um, we are looking at a point in our economy where we're stabilizing. Um, we've got all of our current construction sectors maxed out on iron frame buildings. We don't have many, we've got five, which is fine. Um, we're making a small profit and we're not at max taxes. So that tells us we could be pushing our economy harder, right? We could be in debt, we could be making a loss, we could have higher taxes and we could have more construction sectors. So all of those are signs that we need to be accelerating a little bit. It's just my dog wearing his poor little cone of shame in the background. He's okay, he's just got a sore foot. Um, let's build another construction sector or two. Um, we're just gonna, we'll pop one in Luristan and one in Irakajemi. So I like to spread these around, even though there are efficiency benefits to having them in the same place. Oops, these need to be alt-clicked so that they build first. They build very quickly and then they make the next things build faster. Um, I like to spread around the construction sectors because they kind of act as welfare because they're being employed by the government, uh, the population that's like it's permanently running more or less. So it means that it's pretty much guaranteed income for that province. I'm just going to cancel duels uh, for the sake of not having this event pop up. Um, I'm just going to skip through events uh, for the most part if they appear during this playthrough when they're not relevant to the economy. Um, but yeah, we're going to ban dueling. Okay, with our newly expanded construction sector, we're now making a loss, so let's pop up taxes. Making an acceptable loss, but maybe let's put one of these on wooden buildings. So that'll spread around our costs. It costs less to, um, you know, buy wooden fabric instead of iron and tools. Um, but also, uh, yeah, it makes iron cheaper for the other ones, and it keeps the other industries ticking along. So we're building these sort of like um, quality of life things like the textile mills, the food industries, the wheat farms, and then things like glassworks and lead mines are kind of looking to expand our industry further. They're like inputs and needed goods for a bunch of industries, and they're just generally pretty profitable. Um, but we're also going to build a motor industry. So this is the tech that we just unlocked. You can see uh, it's predicted earnings there. I'm oh, sorry, I should have stayed there. Yeah, minus plus, uh, minus one and a bit thousand a week um, because no one is currently using motor industries um, we should also upgrade all of our mines so we're gonna go we're gonna start with a coal mine um, because the atmospheric engine pump uh, mining equipment production method right so there's all these different production methods uh, this one is uh, it starts to use coal to produce coal so if we go over to an iron mine um, it will require us to buy more coal, right? Plus a hundred more in total, and it's gonna like almost double the cost of coal in our market. But if we use that exact same tactic, uh, sorry, production method at a coal mine, um, it is only gonna use more tools. So we're just getting more coal for more tools, which is a really good deal. Um, we're also gonna expand our coal mine because we're about to switch a bunch of other production methods over to the things that use coal. Um, so we're just going to need more. In fact, I'm going to put two in. So let's go over to our iron mine and switch that up to the atmospheric engine pump. So it's still going to make uh, coal a lot more expensive, but it's also going to make iron a lot cheaper. And then we'll see here, this is going to start making it more profitable for it to produce coal. 
we've already got our uh, export tariffs on because we knew before that we were going to need all of the coal that we could get. Okay, there's no way we're going to be making enough. So let's turn our urban center back down off coal. Um, we can account for that by building more government administration. Okay, we're making a profit again, which is nice. Our standard of living has come up a little bit since we built those buildings from like 9 point something to 10.2. It's pretty good. Okay, this is a very underdeveloped place. Let's build a port and... What should we get? Maybe a textile mill. It's going to be quite profitable, but 0.78k a week. And we always, like... Everyone always needs clothes in every country, so it's like basically guaranteed income. So let's crank this back up to iron frame. There we go, that's nice. Uh, I think turning down taxes will be slightly too much of a loss, but we could look to do that soon to keep the standard of living climbing. Um, or we could just keep building stuff. And I think we should probably just keep building stuff. And what we should be building is railways. Oh, we're not quite there yet with tech. That's fine. This motor industries will be a little bit early. Okay, there's low market in Isfahan, which is why we need railways. And still insufficient taxation capacity, which is why we're building this government admin. And there's a shortage of coal. So let's keep getting coal. Okay, so Bessemer process is kind of relevant for us because it is a... Uh, steel mills production method uh, and also because it unlocks reinforced concrete uh, which basically makes your construction sector 15% more efficient which is a huge amount especially if uh, you've been pushing it a little harder than we have in this game and you've got a lot of construction sectors but that's going to be 13 years to research so it's not really relevant anytime soon. Now this isn't a military guide, but our military can be upgraded uh, and whatever upgrades it needs, uh, and regardless of how we upgrade it, I should say, it needs um, small arms and artillery. So we could start building a arms industry. Let's pop something in. Yeah, here, yeah, why not? We'll do an arms industry. You can see it's predicted to make a loss, which is fine because it's basically actually just there to offset our other loss as of the cost of upgrading our troops. So I, I'm not really going to talk about uh, military very much, um, just on an intuitive level. If you go to development, you see your different military things. The higher your production method, the better. Um, but you've got to make sure that you be, uh, can supply them and you want to make sure that you upgrade them long enough in advance before a war. We're playing a very peaceful game as Persia. I think there's a lot of opportunities to expand, um, to take Afghanistan or Kalat and Makran, Oman, whatever, depending on the diplomatic situation. And then, you know, after not too long, you might be able to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ottomans. Um, but I'm just taking it slow and showing you how to set up a, a country at the beginning of the game. Our market access continues to decline. Okay, here we've just got a tech that lets us uh, upgrade uh, another barracks level so we're going to need small arms for that so again worth building this um, arms factory sorry I was saying we've got low market access um, in um, Mazandran and also Isfahan and we just need railways so let's pop the uh, road maintenance thing on here as well okay we're now making quite a lot of money so I did say we would turn down taxes, but instead we're going to turn up construction. And honestly, I think that's like the right call most of the time. Um, Mazengen's having uh, infrastructure issues already, so let's not burden it further. Uh, let's put one in Fars. Oh, and that should be alt clicked. I keep not doing that. Construction sector at the top, sorry. Not the... I messed that up a little bit. Okay, so I've just got this event. Um, it's sort of vaguely uh, industry related, so I'm going to leave it in. Uh, we will secure the pages of tomorrow's classics and set up paper import to the Journal of Persia. It's just a free, cool, easy mission, so let's do it. 
Um, if we go to our journal entries, we can see set up paper import. We just need to import paper to the capital. So we can go market, trade routes or uh, details. We can find paper in here. Here it is. And we can set up an import route. Um, we don't have to make any money from it. It just has to go through. So we'll do that. Uh, unpause. And we completed it successfully. Hooray. We can just immediately cancel that. Good, good. Much more importantly, in the long term, we got railways unlocked. So this unlocks rail transportation for a whole bunch of different um, factories. It's a production method. And it also unlocks railway, a building. And that's what we're going to be building as soon as possible. So we're just going to alt-click railway here in Isfahan, where we've got uh, transport issues, and also in Mazandaran. So we'll just alt-click those. Oh, it automatically will come up subsidized. I like to turn it off subsidies. Um, other people disagree about that. Um, uh, up to you to find out what you like. And so I'm doing these even ahead of a textiles mill because they allow all of the things that are being built here to get out to the rest of the market and vice versa. So it's like, it's almost like building a part of a motor industries and a part of a paper mill and a part of a lead mine and all of these other states all at the same time. So I think it's really worth like getting it ahead of finishing off this textile mill, even though that's also going to be super valuable. So we unlocked a tech. Um, let's take water tube boiler next, which is going to unlock uh, a bunch more production methods, basically. Um, most of which use more coal. Well, all of which use more coal and more tools. So that's a good warning to us. We need to increase our coal and tool situation. So let's build another coal mine. Let's expand our tooling workshop here again. That should be good for now. We're still making a profit, even with our uh, additional construction sector. So let's build another additional construction sector. Let's just put it in Khorasan where we've got a lot of population. Let's also build a railway here. We might as well just start building railways in like most of our provinces, especially the big ones and especially the ones that don't have ports already. Might even build a second one here because we know that this coal mine is going to get big, but uh, we can leave that for a little while. Okay, and now we're making a good amount of loss. Um, 4k and a gold reserves of like 2.5, 3k, that's pretty good. So that's like, yeah, 1 to 2% again, if my extremely low quality arithmetic is approximately right. Oops. Once again, I'm just ignoring all of these things, even though a bunch of the laws are like relevant to the economy. Um, I'm just trying to show you how to build buildings. Um, the, the way that we take advantage of laws is kind of you know, it comes at the industry at a weird angle. Uh, I think I said last time it's really worth going for interventionism or laissez-faire. You can go back and see why I said that's the case. Um, it's also worth increasing your tax, uh, or moving down the tax legislation because um, these tend to give more money. So this one would give us 12k more. This one would give us 13k more. And this would give us 2k more. So, you know, um, it can be valuable just for having more income. And there are other things that are worth changing as well. So like getting rid of migration controls if you have it, but we don't. So that's great because uh, this means that people can move into our country. Uh, improving the racial segregation situation means that more people will move as well and be productive and happy workers and so on and so forth. There's a bunch of other stuff that's valuable, um, but maybe I'll do another video about that at some point if people would like. For the same reason, I'm not really looking at the journal entries. These things like most of them are generic for the different nations and if you like get them or you feel like going for them it's fine but that they just like give you some random little bonus for a few years okay the price of lead is fluctuating wildly it's weird Okay, here's our arms industry. We're going to actually set it to production method two, making cannons, which produces artillery. Um, so there's a few issues here. Um, one is that artillery and small arms are not in demand. So let's set up our military so that they are in demand. We'll just move everything that we can. That's fine, the barracks and the conscription sector. Again, this isn't a military video, so don't really worry about the difference. We're just upgrading everything that we can. And so this is going to make these extremely expensive, and it's going to make it way more profitable for the arms industry. However, 
it is short on hardwood, which we are not producing at all. No cell orders. So let's uh, get one of our logging camps, uh, a small one. So this one's one out of seven. Um, and let's switch it over to hardwood production. We can also make it a sawmill with uh, tools. That's a good idea. So now the price of hardwood has dropped dramatically and it's going to make it way cheaper for them to make artillery and small arms. And as they employ more, it all becomes more efficient and, you know, it all works out. And again, this is what I was talking about, um, that the military is basically just your economy expressed in how many barracks you can build um, and that sort of thing. Uh, and that includes, you know, arms industries and munitions plants when we get to them. Now, these are still pretty expensive, so I think I'm going to actually add another one of these on. And that has spiked our uh, expenses quite significantly. So you can see goods for military wages went from nothing to 6,000. And, uh, yeah, it's split, yeah, what, like 20, 30 artillery to small arms. We are making a small deficit now, so maybe let's turn one of our construction sectors back down to wooden frames. And we need to keep building. Um, let's see what we have shortages of. Small arms and artillery, that's fine. And this is going to be small arms and artillery as well. Let's just build some more logging camps. Uh, let's go this one and also a coal mine here. And let's go check the standard of living so we can see what our population need. Grain, opium, clothes. Clothes are very expensive, so let's build some furniture places. So uh, if we go here, text, uh, sorry, clothes, textile mills. 0.97k predicted earnings a week, that's pretty good. Let's put in two. Let's put in a railway here and an opium farm. And this is kind of the point at which the game starts getting fun when you like start getting a significant amount more construction and you can just kind of like line up 200 buildings to build and then it, it'll, you know, a month later it's all done. That's not quite where we are yet, but we're getting there. There's sort of this positive feedback loop of your economy growing um, and how much debt you can afford. Um, which again, I think is like a impressively well modeled um, on the real life, uh, the real world. Uh, so well done paradox on that on that count okay it's uh, just a couple of weeks until our second arms industry level is built here and you can see it's actually the number one arms industry in the world uh, which is pretty cool given that it's just like in Persia you know um, that means that we're doing something right there it is it's built and this should see the prices of artillery and um, small arms drop fairly significantly. Okay, it has not made much of a difference on the price of small arms, so let's queue up another one. And let's see how that's affected our costs. It's brought it down a little, so from nearly 6k to 5.3. So it's not heaps, but it, you know, it's not nothing. Small arms are still pretty expensive. Let's put on an export tariff because uh, all of these people are currently bringing um, small arms out of our country. So they're all like, you know, they're, they're each buying 10, right? So 10, 10, 10, so 30. So that would be double our current sell orders, um, which would make it like extremely affordable for us to have small arms here. Um, another thing that we could consider doing rather than just building arms industries here is putting another one somewhere else um, and having it specialize only in small arms so by just keeping it on prioritize small small arms production and then have the other one uh, increasing artillery production that can be a pretty efficient way of doing it but we're not going to have a huge uh, military so I'm just doing it this way okay again we're getting close to the end of our build queue you can see the standard of living is going up as we build more of these buildings opium and clothes so just more textile mills I guess we can also increase the uh, type of textile mill 
production method, so let's do that. Um, let's build another one, and let's build another one here. We can upgrade that as well. So the problem with this is it's going to make dye more expensive, but we can build a dye plant somewhere. Uh, I think we have them here. Dye plantation, yep. And we could also make dye plantations use rail transport, which will make our railways more profitable. And we can also put a railway in to build here. Let's get one anywhere that we don't currently have one. Let's also build another cotton plantation here and uh, government administration. And we definitely need a railway in the capital. Railways aren't very profitable, but we can make them more profitable by switching over, say, our opium farms to using transport, uh, which is what the railways produce, and so that increases the cost of transport, and it makes them more profitable and more able to hire. Okay, we've got water tube boiler, which is great, so this is why we want more coal and tools, which actually I'm not sure we built enough of, but we can... Uh, let's pop two more on the stack, one in each of our coal provinces. And let's build another tooling workshop here, I think. And uh, let's start by producing more coal, uh, sorry, producing more tools and more steel, wherever our steel mill is here. Okay, so we can improve our steel production and add more coal and let's build another one as well. Oh, I shouldn't unpause, I should set our next research. So here we've got a few choices. 10 years away is too long to spend on anything. Intensive agriculture is fine and will increase our standard of living somewhat. Um, these unlock other parts of our economy that are a little more peripheral, so canneries for food workshops, um, improved glass production, um, food, more food industry stuff, rubber if we had rubber, which we don't. Um, so what about some society research? Academia will be finished in a couple of days anyway. Currency standards per capita taxation is pretty valuable for us. So that might be worth doing. And these are six years away. Um, let's go with currency standards. That's a very uh, pleasant amount of loss to be making. Especially when we're making like triple that or double that in um, interest. Oh, sorry, losing in interest. Okay, so dye. Uh, let's import some dye here. Uh, you can actually see how much we need. So 25 being sold and 20 uh, and 50 being bought. So there's about a gap of about 25. Um, so let's buy the 25, and that should make it uh, pretty cost efficient for everyone to be using it. And it also shouldn't ruin things for the dye plantation. Should still be making a pretty decent profit. And then when it gets bigger, we can probably cancel that trade route. We still don't have enough taxation in Tabriz, so let's build another government admin here. And where's our paper mill? We could switch up to sulfite, uh, but we don't actually have any sulfur mines, so let's get a sulfur mine. I think we have some sulfur somewhere. Okay, yeah, here it is. Okay, we've got sulfur in Khuzestan, so let's build a sulfur mine there, and then when it's finished building, uh, we can switch over our paper mills. Let's also build another one, I think. Okay, here's our lead mine. It's making almost nothing because lead is very cheap. Um, it's not being bought anywhere. So what buildings use lead? Glass works use lead. So we could turn them all up to leaded glass. Uh, let's do that. It's saying it's going to spike the price up to 70, but that's not accounting for the fact that we have a lead mine that is going to start producing a lot more. So let's stay here and watch. All right, so it went from like whatever, 0.2 up to 238 that it was making here. So it is up to 70. This is going to temporarily be making glass very expensive, which will have other knock-on effects, especially later on when you're using glass for like your uh, service buildings and so on. But once this place is fully employed, actually, let's um, put it on engine pump. It's probably not necessary. But yeah, now the price is coming down. It's down to 50. It's going to keep dropping a little bit, I think. Great. 
And so that's now like uh, another 5,000 people who are employed in Isfahan who weren't before. And it's also making glass cheaper for everyone, which is great. There are going to be some people who were laid off from the glassworks, um, but it seems like they've sorted it out, which is, you know, good for them. Okay, our arms industry is hiring. Small arms are still expensive. So you know what? I think I am going to actually uh, build that second small arms factory. And let's pop it in Luristan. Go arms industries. And before it's built, we're going to prioritize small arms manufacture. Okay, Sistan has low market access. There is a railway on the way. But, oh yeah, it's 13 of 9. So a railway should make the difference. How far off is it? Sistan. It's being built now. Good. Making a small profit, so let's switch everything back up to iron. That shouldn't change it too much. I think that was just one of them that was being built on iron. Yeah, so I guess it's 2k more or something in expenses. And we are spending 21,000 on iron, so we could probably stand to build a few more iron mines. Or we could just increase them up to this, and also put on the rail transport. Um, that's going to, yep, yeah, reduce the price of iron. And there we are making a profit again. It's a really nice feeling in the game of just like bumping your expenses and uh, production around so that so that everyone's making a little bit of money. You're making your money from tax, and everyone else is making their money from being paid, and standard of living's going up, and you know it's the capitalist dream, right? Okay, so this used to be like twenty percent, so we've massively reduced how much people are paying compared to base price for their population needs. Grain is now cheap relative to what it used to be. Uh, clothes are now a reasonable price. Services are very expensive, and that's going to be partly because we're taxing them. Uh, we're making quite a lot on that, but also because we haven't upgraded our urban centers very much. So let's do that. So let's pop in a um, uh, upgrade the, this to the glass usage one. Um, and we can probably afford to do this at a couple of our urban centers. They're not very big. Um, and we've just upgraded our glass production. And services being cheaper is good for everyone. Okay, so this one's going to make glass a bit more expensive. So why don't we build one more glass works? We can't upgrade it any further. Uh, and then when, that, when that's uh, finished, we can upgrade our... The rest of our service uh, places, but even that has already increased the standard of living there. Look at that. Services. Oh, it's not that much actually. I'll tell you what, we can also improve our services by switching them over to public trams. We're making a reasonable amount of transportation, so I think that's not a bad idea. Logging camps that look like they're going to be profitable. Let's just pop one on here. I just like keeping things building. We've got 145,000 peasants, uh, which actually reminds me, we unlocked universities before. So let's build a university here in Tehran. And let's also build one in our population capital, Tabriz. Um, that's just going to make sure that our peasants um, improve their lot. Uh, let's build some more agricultural stuff as well. I'm going to put in some naval bases as well. Uh, again, I'm not really focusing on um, military very much, but it's worth seeing how it interlocks with the industry. Um, and part of it is with boats. So we've already got our shipyard somewhere. Where is it? Uh, did I not build a shipyard? All right, well, let's build a shipyard. Um, we should probably build it before the naval base, but uh, it's fine either way. Yeah, let's move it up to before the naval base. It's worth getting these things the right way around, and it's better for a building to be sitting unprofitable for a while than a thing that's costing you straight out of your government budget, like the cost of your navy, um, when you can't afford the input goods. Okay, we're making quite a lot more money now, which is lovely. I think we can turn down taxes now. We can make a tiny loss here. It's generally good, so although I do like to go up to very high taxes early on um, because it just pays for like this explosion of industry that we're trying to have right now, um, having it on high taxes is nice because you have uh, flexibility. If there's some unexpected cost arises, you can move it up to very high for a little while um, and so on and so forth. And it's much easier to adjust the um, basic income tax than it is the consumption taxes. So I like to keep these on 
permanently or like semi-permanently and you can play with taxation level pretty much as much as you want. All right, so we got currency standards. I don't think banking is where we're at just at the moment. Let's see if there's any production that we want. Mechanized workshops is probably pretty nice. Um, it lets us use tools in textile mills. Um, these are still nine years away. So yeah, let's do that. That, that seems good to me. Okay, wood import. It's not very profitable. Okay, there's a lot of opium demand, um, which is weird because we're producing probably a, a large amount of the world's opium. We could see exactly how much if we wanted to. Um, there's probably other ways to do it, but you can go here, prestige, leading goods producer. Oh no, we're not. We're number two in engines and transport, uh, which is a good sign for how our industrialization is going relative to the rest of the world, um, but not in opium. So let's build another opium plantation or two. One of the fun things to do as Persia is to basically invade Afghanistan. Uh, if we go here, you can see um, the potentials. Um, so Persia has potential for a few opium farms around here, but uh, Afghanistan has a lot more. Kalat has some, and then yeah, North India and South China have quite a few as well. Um, but just with Persia and Afghanistan, you can like outplay the AI dramatically in the opium game and basically either, you know, yeah, control the world supply one way or the other. So that can be a fun uh, goal or game plan if you're looking for a game to do in Persia. So I think we can keep expanding our construction sector a little here. Again, we want to be making like a moderate loss. So we're alt-clicking that, so it's going right to the top here. Then we're building these tooling mills and steel mills, that's good. But now we've got the uh, railways running out, we've basically gotten through the majority of the early industrialization, so I'm probably going to call the game pretty, uh, this video pretty soon. Um, this little intro where you go lathe, mechanical tools, atmospheric engine. Actually, this playthrough, I, I mean, I should have thought of this before, ideally, but I think it might even be better to go atmospheric engine first before mechanical tools, depending on your situation. Then water tube and railways, um, and just the process of moving from the wood-based iron frame and to getting to the point where you can just, like, have a self-sustaining growth of um, industry, construction industry, army... Um, Navy. Uh, I didn't really touch on the Navy, but um, maybe I'll do another video about how the military works uh, in the game if people are interested. But also this really important issue of standard of living and um, how to check what your peasants need, or your population I should say, what they need. Oh, what's going on there? What their expenses are and what you can build in your construction uh, queue or what you can improve the efficiency of um, to make their life better. So that's my intro to the uh, two sort of initial uh, industrial revolutions in Victoria 3. This is pretty relevant no matter who you're playing, um, Brazil, Peru, Mexico, like all, all of the small states that start a little behind in tech and industry. It's going to look pretty similar to what we've just done with Persia. But even if you started somewhere like Belgium, um, you know, they haven't really got much further ahead than us in terms of the sort of things that they're producing. They've got chemical plants, which we don't, and that is a bit finicky. So again, maybe that's a little, uh, I could do a mini tutorial on how to make uh, chemical plants efficient. But um, they don't have any motor industries and they start as one of the most technically advanced nations in the game. Um, so they're still playing, you know, the same process of trying to get all of their interlocking industries producing stuff efficiently so that everybody profits um, same as we are right here in Persia. Okay, well that's it. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I hope this was helpful and informative. I'd really appreciate it if you left a like, left a comment, subscribe, you know, all that good stuff. And uh, please come see me play Victoria 3 on stream as well, um, which I do at unpredictable times. Um, but it's twitch.tv slash noonplaysgames. Alright, I'll catch you in the next video.